What's up, everybody? Thank you for clicking on the link. It's me again, Fair Play, here with my review of last week's episode of Empire Season 3, Episode 14, Love is a Smoke. Yes, y'all, I've got to get it out. It's probably going to take me two um, recordings to get this one done as well because of the time limits on the software. But anyway, let's get started, shall we? So the episode begins with Lucius and Juliana um, is showing that they had a relationship about 15 years ago. He actually wrote a song for her that he never released. Cookie walks in on Lucius while he's in the studio listening to the song. She's actually never heard the song before. She didn't know who it was for, but it's called Crazy Crazy For You. She likes it. She tells him it's hot and everything. And he tells her, thank you, of course. Cookie then tells Lucius that she thinks that Angelo is about to propose to her because he had already told her that if he won the primaries, he would propose to her. So Lucius acts supportive and he actually tells her that he'll fall back if she decides to say yes to his proposal. Cookie plans on talking to the boys about it. <clears throat> so Cookie wants, so actually Lucius said that he, he wants him and Cookie to have a come to Jesus meeting with Andre because he's dealing with this dangerous woman, Juliana. Meanwhile, Dre, Shine, and Juliana are actually trying to get a gaming license from the head of the Las Vegas Gaming Commission. Her name is Commissioner Frost. They want Tori to be a songwriter for Nessa on the Vegas project. Lucius, but Lucius has her committed to her Inferno project. So they, they're actually having a meeting in the boardroom at Empire and they're waiting on Tori to get there. She's like two hours late showing up. She's such a drag, just does what she wants to do. So rebellious, you know. But anyway... So she gets there um, and she lets them know that Lucius has her committed to the Inferno project. But after talking to Andre, um, talking to her and Juliana and Andre, she decides that she can slip one past Lucius. So then Andre begins to question the nature of Juliana's and Lucius's relationship after seeing her try to talk to him at the club the other night. She says that they met a long time ago, but he doesn't seem to remember her. So she basically is keeping her relationship with Lucius a secret from Andre as well. Shine gets up and he reminds Juliana in the meeting that he and Dre are actually working on this Vegas deal and not her. And she says something funny. She calls him Shiny. She says, OK, Shiny, don't worry about it. You know, she's just trying to do her part in this project. So meanwhile, Angelo goes and asks Jamal. He goes to the studio where Jamal is and he asks for his blessing and he's asking Jamal if he should actually propose to Cookie. Of course, Jamal is all on board. He's like, yeah, go ahead and ask him. What are you waiting for? So he eases Angelo's fears and concerns about this Kusha's thing by telling him that the music project that him and um, Adele had been working on is actually canceled. So Jamal advises Angelo that Cookie likes dramatic um, things. So he's got to go all out with it. He's got to step up and be a man. And then Jamal jokingly calls him, hey, stepdaddy. Okay. So meanwhile, Cookie and Lucius run into Dre and Juliana and Shine in the hallway after the meeting. Julio makes Juliana makes it known that she knows Lucius from the past. But Cookie is noticing that there's strange behavior, which is very awkward. Lucius tells Cookie that Raphael was Juliana's husband and that he was one of the biggest players in Vegas. Now, when they introduced, when, uh, when actually Juliana told uh, some kind of way i can't remember who said what but um she used the word was when she referred to raphael and lucius told her was what do you mean was he caught that um anyway he tells cookie that um raphael was one of vegas's biggest players he was corrupt and he was a despicable man and that is the very reason why lucius doesn't want empire to have anything to do with this vegas project but juliana looks familiar to cookie cookie's looking at her but she doesn't remember that she saw Juliana back at the hairdresser last week. Meanwhile, or the next day, Cookie has dinner with her boys and she tells them about Angelo proposing to her. Hakeem seems to be the only one that's not too thrilled about the idea of having a stepdaddy. He says he's too old. Um, so Dre supports Cookie, but wants to ensure that he has her full support and backing on this Vegas deal. Um, so there you have it. She finally convinces all three of the boys to get on board with what she's got going on. Jamal is supporting her. Jamal tells Hakeem we should be happy for, uh, for a cookie because now she's doing her thing. She deserves to be happy. 
All right. Meanwhile, Lucius and Thirsty are questioning Shine about Raphael. He's playing dumb, of course. Becky interrupts their interrogation to tell Lucius that he needs to come and listen to Tori's demo song called Play the World. Becky suggests putting a full completed version on Empire's Extreme because y'all, I want to tell y'all, the song really did sound good. It was a pop song that Tori was singing. I did not realize that uh, Ruma Willis has such a pretty voice, but she really can sing. She's funny looking, but she's got some pipes, y'all. Anyway, like I said, Becky suggests putting a full completed version on Empire's Extreme. The only problem is that Andre is planning to use the demo for Nessa's Vegas show. So Lucius tells her, of course, in his sneaky way, go ahead and release the song that night on Extreme and have Hakeem and Tiana introduce it. Meanwhile, Anika, she shows up at Tariq's place with a suitcase, acting like she's sneaking around. Lucius and Cookie have her wired so they can hear everything that Tariq and Anika are going to say. Tariq tells Anika that he's suspended, but if his plan goes well, this will get him reinstated because he wants uh, Anika really, really bad. He can't believe that she's there. He's all excited that she didn't showed up to his dirty apartment. She's looking around because it's not like what she's used to at Lucia's house. Tariq's apartment is junky and really just kind of yuck, you know? Um, anyway, <clears throat> um, while he's listening to them, he, he overhears Tariq tell Anika that he's been suspended and that he's trying to get reinstated by helping her. Lucius tells Cookie that Thirsty can actually get Tariq kicked out of the FBI and even locked up for working while on suspension like that. Angelo calls Cookie while she's there talking to Lucius and he wants her to hurry up and come home because he has something important planned for her. So she leaves Lucius there with the baby. Uh, Anika's baby of course and y'all I noticed they kept switching that baby out one minute that baby was light skin and then that baby was my color the color of chocolate I was like brown the baby was brown from light skin to brown I, why do they do that on these shows as if people not going to notice anyway <sighs> Meanwhile, Shaw, um, Shine actually calls Lucius and he tells him that he knows what happened to Raphael now. But when in actuality, uh, Shine already knew what happened to Raphael because he saw Juliana kill her, but he has not told Lucius that. So anyway, he tells him on the phone that he knows what happened to Raphael now, but he needs to see him face to face so he can talk to him. He don't want to talk on the phone. And while they show Shine in the car, you see the silhouette of a what appears to be a woman in the back seat, And I can only assume that that was Juliana in the back seat listening. Okay, so Shine tells Lucius, like I said, that he needs to meet him face to face and talk about it. Um, Lucius tells Cookie what Shine said, and she offers to roll with him. She said, I'll roll with you. Just give me a gun, and I'm there. So she's very loyal to Lucius. She knows that she's on her way to meet Angelo. She didn't tell Angelo that she's coming, but instead, she offers to go with Lucius. No, she ain't ready to marry Angelo. I already saw that at that point, that Cookie needs to just go ahead and tell that man that she can't do it. Anyway, Lucius declined her offer and told her to go ahead and meet Angelo because you are about to be proposed to. Cookie is hesitant for a minute, but she's also grateful. And you could tell in that moment that she's having second thoughts. Okay, Lucius goes back to Empire in his office and Juliana just walks up behind him out of nowhere and she pulls a gun out on him. And she does this basically to get his attention, to force him to listen to her. Lucius then has a flashback to when he was dating her and he actually found out that she was married to Raphael about 15 years ago. When Raphael and all of his boys robbed Lucius of $10 million that he had made somehow. Um, but Raphael used Juliana the whole time she was dating um, Lucius. Raphael was using her to bait Lucius. And so they basically stole that money from Lucius that night. Bunky was actually there. That's when him and Bunky was still in good standing. And Bunky was his security guard at the time. So at this point, here it is 15 years later. Juliana knows that she owes him money. And Lucius tells her, you owe me $10 million. And she needs Lucius to sign off on this Vegas deal in order for her to pay him back. Because at this point, she's broke. She told him that Raphael kept all $10 million of those dollars that they stole for him. She says, I know I robbed you, but I need you. In order for me to pay you back, I need you to sign off on this Vegas deal. Um, she says that Raphael, like I said, took all the money. And that she eventually killed him because she knew that he was going after Lucius. And he did say that he wanted to meet Lucius. And I knew in the when I saw him talking to Shine that it couldn't have been any good reason why he wanted to meet Lucius other than to do harm to him. So she, I believe she told the truth about that. So she told Lucius that she killed Raphael for him. Um... So if Juliana and Dre don't get that deal, things are going to be real bad for them. Now, it seems like Lucius is going to agree to help her. 
Okay, so then you see Tariq and Anika again. They spent the night together because it's the next morning. But it's obvious that they did not have sex from the way Lucius, I mean, from the way Anika is acting. She doesn't really want him to touch him. She doesn't like him at all. But she says they talked. They she makes a comment about them staying up talking all night. But Tariq wants her bad. He's rubbing and hugging all on her. But you can tell Anika ain't down for that. So Tariq gets a call from who he thinks is his agent, Sweetwater, back at the station. Meanwhile, Hakeem and Tiana introduced Tori Ash's song that night and they shoot the video to live stream it. Jamal comes in and notices that there's drugs in the studios and he knows that Tori shouldn't be around drugs because she's a recovering addict. So he goes off on her. She's not taking the drugs. She's just in there with the drugs. But anyway, he goes off on her. She gets mad and puts him in his place because he's acting like her father. And then she turns around and she leaves and she walk leaves with some girl. So it's apparent that uh, Tori is probably a lesbian. All right. Anyway, Tariq arrives at some hotel where he Tariq arrives at some hotel where he was supposed to meet Mr. Sweetwater, or so he thought. But it turns out to be Lucius. Tariq finds Lucius there. Lucius tells Tariq that the FBI are on their way because he's already called them and told them about all the illegal things that he's been doing. But we know the audience, us, we know that Lucius is probably lying and he did he did not call the FBI. But this is what he has scared Tariq with that the FBI is on their way. Anyway. Lucius reminds Tariq that he has already offered him a chance to be a part of the family. But of course, we know Tariq turned him down with that. Lucius also tells him that he's got to run. He says, now's your opportunity to go. So Lucius actually gives Tariq a backpack full of money. I mean, it was full of money. And of course, Tariq looks at it. He smirks. He takes the backpack and he leaves. Like I said, it's obvious that Lucius never called the feds. Meanwhile, Angelo is at the Grant Kelly show that he had told um, Cookie about earlier. He had been invited to this coveted show called Grant Kelly Show. and He's being interviewed and um, they ask him and he's actually brought Cookie with him. He invited Cookie to go with him because he wanted her to be by his side when he went on this interview. And she agreed, of course. So the man, Mr. Kelly, asked him what are their plans about on their commitment? What, what about their future? Because, of course, we know he's won the primary in the mayor race. So Cook is dressed, looking, sitting up there looking like the black Jackie Onassis, y'all. She looked better than I've seen her look in a while, actually. Angelo's mom is there. And then Angelo, after he explains what their plans are for the future, he pulls a big, beautiful diamond rock out and he proposes to Cookie in front of the world. Cookie doesn't say yes, and she's pretty much stunned and her mouth is wide open, but his his mom notices that she doesn't say yeah she can tell just like we can tell that cookie has gotten herself into something that she don't know how to get herself out of meanwhile dre and juliana show up at the casino where they are to meet up with charlotte frost or commissioner frost lucius is already there talking to frost now neither juliana nor dre knew that lucius was going to show up there he's got thirsty playing one of the waiter's a bar hops there you know how they do lucius is always on guard when he if he finds out some information he's gonna take care of he's gonna beat you to the punchline which is what he did lucius that night lucius had on a different kind of lace front wig he looked like one of the stylistics i was like lucius where you get that wig from it looked like he had on a fresh had a fresh perm but it was a new wig actually anyway lucius tells dre that he and juliana are out of the brand they're out of it is what he says to dre um then back in the Grant Kelly green room, Cookie is mad with Angelo. They bust in and she's mad with him for putting her on the spot like that with the proposal. Angelo takes his mic off, but you notice that he forgets to turn the mic off. Everybody out in the main stage and in the audience can hear their whole conversation. They hear um, Cookie tell Angelo that she's still in love with Lucius and about how Angelo had to help her get out of trouble with the illegal handgun and all this stuff. Angelo is mad going off on her. Um, everybody can hear it. Everybody out on the stage, Grant Kelly, everybody can literally hear this. So then Angelo's mom actually runs back there and she tells him, she says, your mic is on. He's mad and hurt and he tells Cookie that his mama was right about her and her family being poisoned. So Andre calls Cookie. Why after um Lucius tells him that him and Juliana are out of the deal, Andre actually then called Cookie while she was back there with uh Angelo. And she goes out to talk to him. Angelo mom at that point vows to get Cookie back and he she's gonna make Cookie and the Lions pay for what she did to him. Now back at this casino. Lucius introduces Tori Ash to sing in Nessa's place. 
unbeknownst to Dre, Nessa, or Shine. So she's up there singing this song. I'm talking about it's a bad song. It's a song we ain't never heard, and she's singing it in a different style and voice. So Cookie shows up. All this is going on. Nessa's talking to Dre about this girl. First, she takes my spot. At the first, she takes my song, and now she takes my spot. So at this point, Dre looks to Shine, and she tell he tells Shine, "Go get your boys. It's time for us to do it." So apparently, Andre is getting ready to try to kill Lucius at this club. Cookie shows up and sees Lucius kissing Juliana, and she walks away. And this is pretty much the end of the episode. Okay.